in your book, you, you talk about the way in which this sort of recovery of God or this yearning back to God um, ha- took different effects on each of the romantics. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about this, because some of them right, couldn't really make the full leap, and Wordsworth sort of lived long enough to basically recover, make his way back to traditional Christianity, which is not unlike something that, you know, you've described in your own life. Um, but can you talk about the different ways that the romantics kind of I- encountered religion and either did or didn't like find themselves able to recover God? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what you're talking about, Wordsworth said about science, they, they loved science, by the way. Wordsworth right, right. and Ke- Keats was scientifically trained. He was an apothecary. Uh, and, and he would describe reading as like seeing a new planet uh, swim into your ken. Uh, Wordsworth, what Wordsworth complained about, he said, we murder to dissect. So in other words, in taking everything apart, we lose this internal experience of, of meaning, right? And so, and all of that traces back to God. And the one who understood this is Coleridge. Coleridge is the guy, I, I use him, he's almost like a metaphor for the Holy Spirit in that he he was a broken man, a drug addict, uh, an hysteric, a very troubled guy. But he was a genius. He was the greatest genius of the age, the, the, um, a mind that just knew everything there was to know. And he visited each one of the writers in this book, uh, Keats and Wordsworth and Mary Shelley, who wrote Frankenstein, and he inspired them with his vision, because all he ever did was talk, and his talking changed everything. And he was the one guy who understood from the beginning that in order to have true meaning in life, not just invented meaning, in order to have true meaning, you have to have a standard of meaning. And he believed that standard of meaning was Jesus Christ. He was a lifelong Christian, even though he went into different forms of Christianity. And so when he met Wordsworth, Wordsworth was struggling with the, he had been, a, Wordsworth had been a radical. He, the, he was terribly disappointed in the terror and the Napoleonic Wars. He realized that radicalism had failed. He didn't know where to go. He wanted to be a poet, but he couldn't find the way to be a poet. And one day, Coleridge shows up at his house, just shows up out of nowhere and comes in and they start a year long conversation, which leads to one of the greatest books of poetry ever written called Lyrical Ballads, which they wrote together. But really, one of the things that happened in this is Coleridge, in his talking, convinced Wordsworth that the experience of life was not purely internal and it wasn't purely external. It was a collaboration between the mind and the world, God's creation. And he basically said it is the furtherance of creation. It is an act, our experience of life. And this is not just whether you're a poet, it's whether you hear a sound or fall in love or, or uh, whatever it is that your life matters in your life is part of creation. It is an act of creation. Uh, and Wordsworth went on and took this and it turned Wordsworth into a great poet. Uh, and his contribution to lyrical ballads is, is incredible. And he started to talk about the fact that we are in collaboration with the one great mind. And so now this is a new idea. This means that you can't just say, oh, you know, I feel like a woman, therefore I'm a woman. But it can say, you can say, ah, I'm in this body. What does it mean? And what does God want me to make of this? And what does nature talk to me? And so each one of these writers dealt with this in a different way. Now, Keats, who was the most brilliant of them as a poet, had the most talent. He died so young, we don't know what he would have found. But he did say, and this is where the title of the book's come, book comes from, he said, beauty is truth and truth beauty. This is one of his poems. He said, this is the message of art, is that beauty is truth and truth beauty. And so what he was saying about that was not, oh, if you find something pretty, it's true. <laughs> what he was saying is this thing that we call beauty, which is a connection between our experience and reality, this kind of essential connection, is the guide to truth, that we're almost like machines for finding out the truth about life. And we find out that truth through beauty. And this is why, by the way, I write about poets rather than philosophers, because philosophers have never been able to figure this out, because it's not an act of philosophy. It's an act Mm -hmm. of life, and poetry is about life. And, you know, I I wrote this book not for people who love poetry, but for people who want to experience life in the deep way that these guys were talking about.